Hi everyone, this is an unplanned video because I was just in the middle of decorating for Christmas. We always start our Christmas decorations the day or two after Thanksgiving. And I was in the kitchen, I'm putting things around, I'm putting things up and I'm getting out the cookie cutters for Christmas and I'm getting the, the list I made last year of candies and cookies and stuff because I make them low carb. Yeah, I do. I make cookies low carb that you can paint and decorate. The kids love them. Um, and I got a whole bunch of candy and I got even more ideas for this year. So I really can't wait to get started on this stuff because this year for gifts, I'm giving gift baskets of homemade goodies to everybody. So yeah, I'm kind of excited. But as I'm in the kitchen doing all this stuff, all of a sudden I get this overwhelming burst of sureness that I'm never ever in my life going to be morbidly obese again and give me a minute here because <laughs> it's very overwhelming for me. I've spent since the age of eight being morbidly obese. I started gaining weight very fast and a lot of it. My poor father, he, poor guy, was at his wits ends. He was dumping al apple cider vinegar on all my food, mine and my brother's, because I had a brother that the same thing happened to him. Um, well, there was five of us, but it was only us two that were affected this way. And it was like, no matter what he fed us, and he fed us a lot of spinach, and um, like we'd get a piece of meat, some spinach, and there would be vinegar all over the spinach. And he, he would give us a dinner roll. I wish now he would have left the rolls off the plates. Um, but he would give us a dinner roll, and that would be basically our meal. For, for, for a meal. And if we didn't want to eat it, we didn't have to. He didn't force us to eat, but you go to bed hungry. Well, that set me up for binge eating. I'd get up in the middle of the night and, and eventually my brother started getting up in the middle of the night. So between the two of us, we were eating almost, eating my poor mom at house at home because she didn't want to tell my dad what we were doing. She she figured it out. And she didn't want to tell, tell our dad because she knew we'd get our little butts whooped. Um, she, and she didn't understand how bad the obesity was going to get for either one of us. So... When I had that feeling today, I it just it just wow, it almost brought me to my knees. I was just like, oh my God, I'm never going to be morbidly obese again. This is my third year of being low carb vegan. I'm never gonna stop being vegan. I, I said today in the kitchen earlier when my grandson was here, um, I will never stop being vegan, even if I found out it was the very worst thing for my health because I do the veganism for the animals. It's all about the animals for me. I went vegan overnight when I saw this documentary that just really affected my heart. Um, I understand that it's not for all people. I get it. But for me, it affected me and, and it, it solidified that I will never eat an animal product again on purpose. Um, but it happens that occasionally something will get put in something or I'll have something that I don't realize. It does happen occasionally. I'm not so um crazy about it that i freak out about it. i'm just like ah darn it you know but it's only been like eight years for me i'm still trying to figure things out um so anyway i don't care if veganism is the healthiest diet but what happened was the first five years of me being vegan i was doing the high carb low fat diet and man i'm telling you what it was killing me it was killing me smalls it was killing me i i don't even know how to explain to you how bad it got that I remember going on this diet that I'm not going to mention who it was or, or what it was because I found out that I can get in trouble for that stuff. I'm not going to do that. Um, I remember going on this diet where you ate all potatoes for two weeks. And the first time I did it, I gained 16 pounds. And I thought, holy hell, what is wrong with you? Why didn't you stop at five or 10 or whatever? Why did you keep going? But I kept going because somewhere in my brain, I kept thinking if I do this exactly the way they're saying, it's going to work. I'm going to have a big whoosh and I'm going to whoosh out 20 pounds. Apparently that's what I thought. It never happened. And that, that isn't even the worst the worst part or the craziest part. You know the definition of insanity is to keep doing the same thing over and over again looking for a different outcome, right? I did it again. That time I didn't last the whole two weeks. I think I quit around day eight because I was putting on a pound a day and I was like, I can't do this. It doesn't work for me. Um, so that was, that was kind of my first intuition that certain foods were messing me up in the whole weight loss, weight department. I've spent... I'm 62 and I have spent since I was eight basically dying, dieting, dying, <laughs> felt like I was dying, dieting. So I've spent pretty much my whole life dieting. I've lost weight several times. I've lost a hundred pounds enough that I told somebody one time, I said, if I had lost, I've, I've lost three or four people in my life, lifetime or more, depending on their size. Um, if I would have just known what I know now, if I would have known back then what I know now, oh my goodness. And I, I try, I strive and I try so hard, like in our group, in the little groups that I run, the little boot camps and stuff, my, my fondest desire is to give these women or, or people what I found and to give them a way out permanently because I really truly believe 
that what I do can be a way out permanently for people. And it's not hard. You know, I decided to go low carb. I didn't go high fat for two reasons. One, I had a plugged artery and I'm just not willing to plug that up any worse. The second reason was because I'd had a stroke. Um, and the third reason is because I just don't believe that when you have fat on your body, you need a bunch of extra fat. That doesn't make sense to me. You know, I don't, I don't necessarily believe the fat you eat is the fat you wear either. I know that's a thing. Could be a thing. But I believe it's a combination of the fats and the carbs and the way they combine together. I believe that that's the biggest issue. So I'm very careful to not do that. Combine carbs and fats and things like that. Now, if I'm going to make some stir fry, I may use a teaspoon of avocado oil. Um, and if anybody who watches me when I cook and stuff will see me measuring out like a teaspoon of avocado oil for the whole dish and stuff. Um, I'm not crazy about a lot of fats. I love avocados. I think avocados are amazing for our bodies. And, and my understanding of the avocado is that our body doesn't store the fat from avocado like it stores the fat from other products because of all the fiber. I really hope that's the truth. And it seems to be for me in my journey. And, and it seems to be that goes like that for the women that join my groups and stuff. So we're hoping that that's the way that really goes. I don't care about the fats in olives. I don't eat a whole lot of olives. I'll eat four or five of them at a time. I think that's a serving in most of the jars I get. And I was using tahini as a source of fat, which I just recently quit tahini, the nut butters, the nuts, the seeds, and oils because I'm doing a, a low, low, low fat thing right now. Um, <clears throat> and that's just me. I do that around the holidays because we're taking in more um, goodies like the the sugar cookies, not sugar cookies because I don't use sugar. I, I'm completely 100% sugar free. It was really funny at, at Thanksgiving this year. Everybody was questioning me. How can you sit there and not eat any of these desserts? I said, number one, they're not vegan. <laughs> I have vegan desserts at home. I have vegan pumpkin pie at home. I have vegan pumpkin tarts at home. I have these vegan cranberry bars we made at home. They're frozen into little bite size or, or one serving sections. And when we want one, we just take one out of the freezer and there we go. But I don't have to have desserts anymore because I haven't eaten real sugar for long enough that I don't have sugar cravings. And matter of fact, if I was to have a couple bites of sugar, which I have had, um, not recently, but before it sets off cravings, it sets off cravings for breads and carbs and sugars and things like that. And those are things that I don't want to eat for health reasons. Um, just all kinds of reasons and definitely for weight reasons. It was shocking to me how much weight I lost, especially in the beginning of doing this when I decided I was going low carb and I cut out the bread or the breads, the beans, the, the oat mills, all of the, all those heavy grains like that. Um, I cut out potatoes, all the different kinds of potatoes. I even cut out butternut squash and carrots in the beginning. All the squashes and stuff that were the winter squashes and stuff. I cut out a lot and peas. I cut out peas. I cut out all that stuff. Lentils, all that um, in the beginning. And, and weight poured off of me. It just poured off of me. And I was like, what is happening? Then I started to decide that I was going to follow Dr. Esselstyn's plan of eating massive greens because apparently that can help unplug your arteries. And I did it. My artery went from being plugged 60% to now it's 25. Yay. I was pretty excited about that. So I believe in massive greens. And, and I also found when I was eating the greens that all of a sudden I wasn't hungry anymore. It was stalling out my appetite. I wasn't craving things anymore. The more greens you eat, the more it works. In the beginning, I was doing 12 to 14 servings. Trust me, I was in the bathroom a lot. It was ridiculous. Um, but I really felt this driving urge to unplug that artery before I had another stroke. So I had a, I had a driving reason to do what I did. I don't suggest for most people that they start out with 12 servings of greens because it's a massive amount of greens, guys. But I do say, you know, four to six cups a day. If, if that's if four to six cups of greens a day is part of your diet, you're not going to get a whole lot of everything else. You know, you're going to you're going to toss in a half a lemon here and there. You're going to squirt your greens down with you're going to do some avocado with them because fats help you um, metabolize the vitamins better and the minerals. Then you're going to do some proteins, a couple of proteins for the day. And then you might make you some protein bread or something to go with your meals. I mean. There's so many different ways you can do this these days, so many ways. And we've come up with a crap ton of, of recipes and not even on purpose. I, do, I, kinda, I play my kitchen like chopped. It looks like chopped in my kitchen every single day. I go in and I fling open the, the freezer and the, and the refrigerator and I look at it and I go, oh, I need to finish off these vegetables before they go bad or we need to turn this leftover into something new um, and I need these things out of the freezer to go with this. Then I start pulling out all my spice. It seriously looks like chopped. I don't go into the kitchen usually with a plan. If I plan something like the kids are coming over and we're going to have a vegan meatloaf dinner, then I have to literally shop for that dinner. If we're planning for a uh, vegan nachos night, like we're, we got something like that planned for this, this month, I have to go shop for those things when I'm going to have those things for the family. 
I don't have those kind of things in my house. I have all vegan low carb stuff. So when I want to shop, I just get in there and start making things up with what I've got. And it works out every time, you know, every time. So how do I know that I'm never ever going to be obese, morbidly obese? Like, like right now I still have that last 20 that I've hung on to for the last year. Um, ever since my surgery, I cannot seem to budget this thing, but it is kind of budgeted right now. So I'm really happy about that. Um, but I got that last 20 that I'm not overly worried about because, hey, I have my neck back. I can fit into size 8 and 10 jeans. I am comfortable wearing sweatshirts and running around the house in them. So I don't stress a whole lot about being a little overweight right now because it's so weird to say I'm a little overweight and to know that that's really all I am. Whereas before I was like 150 pounds overweight, 250 pounds overweight. I, w I was so big at one time in my life that I just stopped getting on the scales because it, first of all, I had to go to the doctors usually to get a special kind of scale because I don't remember them having scales that weighed over 350 pounds back then um, that you could have at home, or at least I never did have any. But um, it's different now. It's, it's but, but the way that I know that it's never going to be a thing again is because when... When I, when I eat too much, if I eat a, a larger amount of food, I try to keep my food like to where my stomach pouch doesn't stretch out more than this. Because I read this thing one time that your stomach is as big as your fist. Um, and I'm not, not just one time. I've actually heard this a couple times. Your stomach is as big as your fist. So however big your fist is, is how big your, your stomach pouch itself is. And that when you eat, you should be able to stretch it to about a size and a half to two sizes of what it is. And that should be it. And you should have a full signal and you should be told no, no more. Okay, so that I never had that. I never had that full signal. <laughs> and your stomach can get grossly stretched out and it fits differently in your body because it's grossly stretched out. And you can eat and eat and eat and eat and never get the full signal because it never hits this little roof part up here that has the, that's where that signal is. Um, so I, I, I coined the term small people eat small for several reasons, but one of the main reasons is because I wanted to train myself to eat small because I knew that the difference between me weighing 265 and me weighing 140 was going to be the amount of food I ate. Okay. It just was, it absolutely was going to be the amount of food I ate, the, the high calorie point in the foods I ate some, I mean, when you're living on nut butters and nuts and seeds and stuff, when, when that becomes your favorite food, that becomes a problem, or at least it did for me. Um, so I knew that, that it was a twofold thing. I, I had to eat less and I had, had to put the right foods in my system. And that got to be a habit. And here I am on my third year. I just celebrated my third holiday doing this. And it was fantastic. There was 31 people there with heaping plates, having a good old time. And there I sat with my little piece of turkey, um, faux turkey roast, vegan turkey roast. And I had my little bit of breadless stuffing that I made that I learned how to make this year that is fabulous and I had a little tinier serving of the green bean bake that I made vegan myself um and I was done and I actually left food on my plate pushed it away and I was done I never had dessert I never had seconds and I felt fabulous I visited with the family I played with the kids I went up and downstairs I had a great day it was a great day and I did not have to eat myself into a coma to do it and here it is, it's two days after. I haven't really had any leftovers. Um, I'm already right back into my health thing, drinking my mushroom coffee, taking my supplements, doing what I'm supposed to be doing. i ha doing a fasting day here and there. Um, I just know that it's not even about me being in control. I don't feel like I'm overly in control. I don't feel like it's a control thing. I'm controlling everything. I just feel like I've created this perfectly smooth, zen lifestyle out of this where there is no real pressure with anything that I'm doing or eating. I'm never tempted to eat things that aren't on plan. I don't eat, I still don't eat a lot of high starch veggies. If I want some sweet peas, which was always one of my favorite, sweet peas and butternut squash were my two favorite things. So what I do is um, if I get a butternut squash, I chop it all up into little tiny cubes. They're not even as big as a dice. And I put them in a bag in the freezer and the peas, you know how small the peas are, right? And sometimes I'll be making something and I'll, I'll, I'll pinch out like, eight to 10 peas, I'll throw it in the whole thing so that you're lucky if you get two or three in your bowl. Or I'll pinch out some of the butternut squash. It's just to get that little snap of flavor here or there. Um, and that doesn't faze me. Doesn't seem to do me any harm at all. And I love the fact that I can incorporate like that. I tell the girls, use your favorite carbs like that, those kind of carbs, vegetable ones only is what I'm talking about here. Use them as a condiment. Don't use them as a side dish. Does that make sense? And it works. It works wonderfully well when I know I can get those bites of that flavor that I like so much. I just absolutely know without a doubt 
at this point in my life, I'm, that's it, I'm small. I'm small for the rest of my life. Whenever I hear somebody say, oh, that thin woman over there, or oh, that, or, or no, she's smaller than so-and-so. You have to get over here, you're smaller. Whenever that, that term comes up in relation to me, I go, oh, <laughs> okay. It feels weird, but okay, I'll take it. Um, especially one day when some lady said that thin woman, we were all looking around and, and she was talking about me and I was like, oh, sh did she just call me a thin woman? I don't think anybody's ever called me a thin woman. That's pretty cool. So, and I, and I want to explain to you guys what the whole small, um, small people eat small really, really means to me. I, I, in my mind, when I see older people, elderly people, older people, they're not big eaters, at least not none of the ones that I really ever have known in my life or knew, especially the ones that live the longest. My father-in-law to be father-in-law lived to be 94, and he was a very thin, tiny eater, um, thin man, tiny eater. Um, I had an ex-mother-in-law; she was very small, she very tiny eater as she got older. I just know a lot of elderly people that eat small, and I've and I've been a volunteer in an elderly home where I went and read books to them one time. The smallest ones ate the smallest, and it seemed like they lived the longest. I don't think. As we get older, we need as much food. We're not as active. We're not as busy. I'm not, if I was working out all the time, if I was doing a lot of heavy lifting, I, I do some, but not a lot. If I was doing that kind of stuff like I was doing in my 40s, I could probably eat more and get away with it. But I still think that as I get older, and I think as all of us get older, you're just going to naturally eat a little less. You know, I, I just, for me to be a small person, I have to eat small. I have to have that mindset. I've wrapped my mind around it to where, you know, that's why, you know, Taking seconds is never a thing for me. I just don't eat second plates of food ever. And back in the day, I can remember having seconds and thirds, you know, so at one time I did. So I just know that those days are behind me now. And I know that eating small for me is going to keep me a small person and maybe help me live a little longer. Because ever since that stroke happened, I've worried a little bit about that. So if me eating small and being a smaller person can help me with my health goals and what's coming up down the road, I'm all about it. If you're, if you're struggling with your health, if you're struggling with your weight, if you're a vegan and you've tried the high carb, low fat thing and it hasn't worked for you, if you would like to try a lower carb, still low fat, but not as low, but lower, um, come look us up. Come, come look us up on Facebook, Vito Low Carb Vegan. You know, I mean, come and see us. Come and check us out. And if you could do me a favor and like this video and maybe subscribe if you haven't already, that would be lovely. I would appreciate it. I have a goal right now just to try to see if I can get to 500, uh, 500 followers. <laughs> I know it's not a huge goal, but that's my goal right now. So if you can help me out, great. All right. Have a great holiday, you guys. I'm not sure if I'll be back on here before the holidays end. It just depends on if I get another. I told you guys I'd never disappear forever, but sometimes I disappear for a while because if I don't have anything to say, what's the point, right? Um, but yeah. That's it for now. Have a happy holiday. Ciao.